We've been hiding in the shadows. We've been biding our time. We've been running from the devil, just trying to make it out alive. We don't have to run, be afraid no more. When the thunder comes, we won't fear the storm. Can you hear the drums beating louder than before? I came here to take over. This means war. War. That is right. It's an all-out faction war. Finstock Exchange will be shaped by me and Tom and no one else. So I need people that are hungry. We're not doing jokes anymore. There's no snacks coming out of fanny packs. Roxy, I'm ready to go to war with you any day of the week. We gonna ride next year. You got bigger things to worry about now. To my former faction mates, uh, enjoy the show tonight because this year I'm going to ruin all of your lives. This means war. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna run around and desert you. Laura Kelly, what's up, girl? Hey, okay, I'm excited. Match about to go down. My Jedi robes are coming. I can't wait. We're gonna do some crazy force tricks. Swag got your back, girl. Let's go and win this number one contender match. I cannot Save wait. Save it, Winston. Save it. I have made it clear to you up to this point what I want to do. Uh -huh. This is going to be about me. It's not going to be about you. It's not going to be about swag. It's not even going to be about Molly. This is about me and my road to revenge against Alex Damon. I'm going to take Molly down and I'm going to get that championship. But I am not going to stop trying to get home to corruption. So I need you to be at the match and do what you need to do, but stay out of my way. Okay, uh, well, that's not the first time I've dealt with somebody with a negative Nancy attitude. Uh, that's okay. I'll deal with that one in the next match.
ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is the movie trivia showdown, season eight. War has begun, and there's no one I'd rather go to war with than my good buddy, Baby Carrots himself, Mark Ellis. What's up, my man? Welcome back to the Schmodown. Christian, it's like we never left. You know, those softies in the NFL get a six-month offseason. Even baseball players get four and a half months. But here at the Schmodown, not even two months. And I'm sure that in that time, you've been putzing around on your Oculus. I clearly went to the gym at least once. But now we're back, and man... Did I miss the schmodown? And what a season we have in store for all the kiddies watching at home. Season eight, it means war with these two incredible matches. Both of them are headliners in my mind, Christian. You're going to have two trivia contests tonight that celebrate places as far away as Middle Earth and a galaxy that's far, far away. There's so much going on here. What a way to open up. Because if you look at just, just alone in the off season of what happened, the free agency special, uh, I mean, that alone, how people were, were joining into factions and what was happening in the off season of phone calls being made. And, and then you see Dan Merle and Ben Bateman join together. Drew McWeeny comes back. Liz Shannon Miller and Ethan Irwin join together. All these at JTE returns, all this drama was happening there. Don't even, let's not even forget don't forget about the fact that we had this massive draft where we invited all of these new people, all the people from all over the world. I mean, hell, we have people from Australia, uh, Canada. There are people for that were uh, that had applied from Scotland. So many different people had come in, and now we have a full-on roster, eight factions, 12 people all fighting for that faction championship, which, by the way, this season, if you didn't know, you guys are responsible. You guys are the ones who uh, can basically determine what the winning faction is playing for. How does it happen? Well, the faction merch. That's right, the faction merch. The, if you are a fan of corruption, well, look at that. You wanted to get a hat, you wanted to get a, a sweatshirt or shirt, a phone case, whatever it was. A percentage of the profits of any of the faction merch this season goes into a giant pool at the end of the season. That is what the factions are playing for. So every time you purchase something, that's where it goes. So make sure you, the link is in the description. You go to the Skybound store and you check it out. Mark, that's just one of the, there's so much. You don't, let's not forget about the glory. Let's not forget about the championships and the championships. You want to talk about the main event tonight? Take it away, pal. <laughs> to quote Joe Theismann before Super Bowl 17, it's about pride, it's about glory, it's about a ring and 70000 Well, it may not be $70,000, but you get the drift. People are hyped for this, and Christian and I are just here to bear witness. So you have two incredible trivia matches here tonight. The headlining match, Christian, you have Chandra the Chosen defending his inner geekdom belt against Mara Kanopic, the Brown Dwarf Star. Yes, I said Mara Kanopic, who's been absent for two years, and now she's back and she's looking to make an early statement. So oh, Mara Kanopic, like you said, she had such a run in 2018. She was she came out of nowhere out of obscurity joins this tournament that was a brand new thing that mike kalinowski had put together and she won the whole thing beating mike kalinowski she then went on to face jason inman and she took the title in a live event won there and then lost the championship to mike kalinowski at spectacular and she stepped away from the game she came back a year later and wasn't able to participate the way that she was hoping things didn't go uh she was on the quirky mercs but it just didn't and go uh, the scheduling and other things just happened that she wasn't able to do it and finally spectacular comes along she says i'm going to use my shot that i had that i was that I, the league had, had given me and i'm going to use it against chandrew that's ballsy because chandrew the chosen is one of the most dominant inner geekdom performers that we have seen in a very long time if he wins here tonight he's the only inner geekdom champion ever to defend twice no one has ever done it only he and jason inman um and hector navarro had defended the titles before so and mara Kanopic looking to become to do a lot of history mark if she wins here tonight she's only her and mike kalinowski would be the only two-time intergeekdom champions but mara would be the only um female uh, not singles but um individual champions that we that we've had in the movie trivia show now 
Yeah, so Christian, we're going to answer a lot of questions by the end of this evening. Will Chandra defend that belt, or will Kevin James's character from The King of Queens have to drive it all the way over to Mara and deliver it to her as the new champion? Who's going to have the better hair in that match? That's big. It's a prop bet in my family right now. But that's not all, folks. Kicking us off here tonight is going to be a Star Wars match for the ages. Molly Damon lights out Laura Kelly, one of them. He's going to have a fruitful match that will likely leave them in the position to herd nerfs. The other one, well, they might want to check their R2 unit for a bad motivator. Well, look, it also continues on the narrative of the dungeon versus swag because both Chandru is repping swag and Mara is repping, repping the dungeon. Molly Damon, not on the suspects this year. this year. She got drafted by the dungeon. And Laura Kelly... She's not happy about where she is. She wanted to be, as we saw before, she wanted to be with corruption. She felt at home with corruption. But Winston said, I don't care where you feel comfortable with. I'm taking you because I believe in you as a competitor. I believe you can help swag. And I believe you're going to get those four points because that number one contender match today is worth four. And the championship match is worth seven with the new point system. So this is... Uh, 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 it's, how is it going to work with Laura Kelly and Winston? I don't know. How is it going to work with Molly and Kaiser? Uh, it's it's going. There's going to be a lot. I'm so curious how all this dynamic is going to work, Mark. Yeah, Winston seems to have some, uh, I don't want to say maybe balls in the air that he's juggling because that sounds dirty. Let's say maybe not all of his ducks are in a row and there might be a couple geese in there that he's going to have to chase. With Kaiser, it feels like Kaiser's walking into this thing tonight with house money, Christian. It, it feels like Kaiser is just like, hey, I got nothing to lose after the performance last season, so let's see if we can cobble together a ragtag group of expendables, go out there and shock the world that quest begins right now it does begin right now and we're about to show you how we got there and just before we do that just a reminder thank you to everybody here who joined today whether you went to the schmodownlive.com to buy those streaming tickets welcome or if you're at the ten dollar patreon level this year this season starting by the way we start on march 3rd the season uh, on youtube starts on march 3rd but we are going to have three pay-per-views a month starting in march and if you are at that ten dollar level you will be getting all those or you can purchase them the way that you purchase this one singular so just to let you know but mark had mentioned Molly and Laura, there's some story behind it. It is a number one contender match. The winner gets a shot at the title, and you want to see how it all went down. Here you go. Star Wars episode whatever. Revenge of the Dungeon. I like that. Trip, trip. Laura, what you all did in this tournament was exceptional. Next season, you two will play each other in a number one contender match. Any of you looking to poach my two ladies, Marisol and Laura, I swear to God, I will make next season a living hell for you. Think I'm bluffing, try me. I wrote a whole promo that I was pretty proud of for this match, taunting Molly. Given how things played out in the draft, none of you will ever get to hear it. You're really gonna take on Laura Kelly? You think she'll play for you? What about Ace? Hmm, there's a couple things. First of all, looks like Ace is still on swag, so boo you there. Uh, second of all, Laura Kelly is a beast. She is knocked down, drag out, earning her nickname, lights out, because I don't even know if she's missed a question yet in this match. She scares the hell out of me, but it fits. Watching the way that she communicates with Shannon, she might have gone to the dark side, but she's powerful. With Laura Kelly on Swagnall, I wonder what her level of determination is. You know, there was all this talk in the off season about Laura Kelly. Is she gonna play for corruption? Is she gonna play hopscotch with Winston? Is she gonna play for the Mets? None of that matters to me. You know what matters? The Maverick, Molly, Damon. Finally, someone with 
was smart enough to know what a true Maverick can do for this league. She knows this game, man. Yeah. She really does. I really think Molly Damon wants to prove that she is a force, no pun intended. Laura and I have been circling each other ever since Star Wars Celebration. This is a long time coming. I was a different player back then than I am now, and the magic is gone. The Maverick is born. Oh, oh Molly, that's adorable. Uh, but you and I both know that this title is mine. I didn't reinvent myself last season just so I could be placed on a different faction this season. I didn't put on pants and stick fake eyelashes on my face during a pandemic for swag. You know, she kind of hates me. It's not important, all right? Because what's going to happen is Laura's going to come in here. She's going to win. That's why it's going to start off the year with the lead. This time, y'all put some respect on my name. After Molly takes out Laura, we get one step closer to taking out the less talented Damon and bringing a Star Wars championship into the dungeon. I have one goal, and that's to take the belt from Alex. And in order to do that, I have to defeat Laura Kelly. So Laura, it's lights out for you. I'm not gonna lose on purpose just to spite Winston. What's the saying? All's fair in love and war. So what does it mean when you take away the love? The only drip drip you're gonna hear oh, is yeah. the tears on the floor. Yes, like please. That? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. That was, uh, pretty unbelievable. great, Christian. It's uh, it's just something I threw together in iMovie. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. It's the first nerd promic, nerd chronic promo of the year, and I am here for it. Unbelievable! What a way to do it. And you look, you look at how much they both want to win this match. How that Star Wars title, what it means to them, and to watch that fire. Laura Kelly obviously is pissed off. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for Molly Damon because a pissed off Laura Kelly scares the hell out of me. So I don't know. And I, and she knows so much, but Molly Damon really wants to play Alex. She really, I, it's not one of these things where it's like, Oh, I don't know if I want to play, you know, at my husband, she wants to beat the crap out of her husband. I know she wants to, and she doesn't want to be, she didn't want to be on the same faction with him because she wants to play him. So that motivation, these are two competitors who want to win. Yeah, someone called Danny DeVito because we could have a war of the roses on our hand, but that's down the road. What I take away from that promo is that both of these competitors are laser, no pun intended, focused on winning this match. And also, was Kaiser wearing a sweatshirt from a, a burger joint? Sounds about right. Yeah. Are you, re you ready to get going? Are the fans ready to get going? Because I'm ready to get going. At least he had sleeves. Sorry about the new link, everyone. We're glad everyone's in. The Bulls are currently losing to the Sixers by one. Let's do it, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the Dungeons. With a record of one win, two defeats, she is Molly the Maverick Damon. Molly the Maverick Damon has arrived. Gone is the magic. However, she is here, determined as always. Molly, was I correct in my assessment that you have been more motivated now? I said today on Stereo that I, when I first, after your first match, when you played in Celebration, it was kind of like, no, I'm, I'm okay with this. And then something happened. You caught the bug, and now it seems like you're more determined than most competitors out there. Is that accurate? That is absolutely accurate. I mean, I, I've been having to see that Star Wars belt in Alex's office since he won it, and I want it in this office. 
It's going to be a lot of office work for these two uh, coming up this season, Christian. Uh, Molly, when you look, obviously, to the future, you eventually want that belt, and you're certainly worthy to have it. But Lights Out Laura Kelly is pretty much right there as well. What do you make of your opponent today? How do you size her up going into this epic match? You know, it, it doesn't scare me. Uh, I totally understand where she's coming from, uh, wanting to get back to corruption. But, you know, I, I think I still want it just a, just a little bit more than Laura. All right, well, Molly Damon has arrived. Molly, good luck to you. You are in the number one contender match, and we will see you in a moment. And her opponent. Representing Swag with a record of two wins, three defeats. She is the 2020 Star Wars Tournament semi finalist. Wait a minute, that is not a swag t-shirt at all. Laura Kelly, uh, Laura, look, let's uh, let's just say it right, right off the bat here. Uh, you don't seem, well, you seem happy now, but you didn't seem happy a little earlier. What's, uh, what's going on? Well, to be honest, purple's not really my color, so I thought I'd just kind of stick with what I know. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so here's my question for you, Laura, because it seems like you really wanted to be on corruption and your <laughs> shirt indicates as much. But if you're not going to rely on Winston much for managing, why would you need to decide which faction you're on? Aren't you just an independent free spirit and able to compete regardless of who your manager is? Sure. I kind of like that. Independent free spirit. No manager, no faction, no nothing. It's just me out here. I'll take that. Works for me. <laughs> All right, before before we get the match started here, Laura, I will say, you know, I know how badly you want that championship. So, and I know that whether it's corruption, whether it's swag, wherever it is, it's about that title. So is there a bit of satisfaction knowing that in order to get to that championship match, you have to take Molly Damon out? Sure. Uh, this is kind of exciting because we did play each other at our very, at least my first match ever. I think yep. it was her first one too. Uh, and I think I took her out of the running for that match. So kind of excited to, you know, sit back and probably take this one fairly easily too. Laura and Molly have arrived, Mark, and we are about to start our match. How does it go? Hello, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans. How are you? I'm Christian Harloff. I wanted to tell you guys about Honey. You know what Honey is? Not that Honey, this Honey. Everybody knows uh, or should know what Honey is. You all shop online. Everybody shops online, especially nowadays. You, you shop online and, and you all see the promo codes that come in. And it's kind of taunting you. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes, gone. It's a thing of the past. So here is what Honey is. It's a free browser extension and it scours the Internet for promo codes and it applies the best ones to, that you can find to put into your cart. Honey supports over 30,000, you hear what it is said? 30,000 stores online. It's, it's tech and gaming, fashion brands, food. And I'll tell you about that in a second because you know that's what this guy used it for. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. Okay, this is how you should envision how Honey works. When you check out the Honey button, it drops down and all you have to do is apply coupons. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the price, the prices drop down. So for me, it was pizza. I wanted to see, I could, oh yeah, five bucks, Psh, gone. But I, but I need to get headphones. I need new headphones. These ones are, are, are running through. I know what it's gonna do. You, you can, it'll save me about 10 to $15 on headphones that I was looking through and said, okay, it, was, it found the coupon, $15 off of headphones, like that. It has over 17 million members already and over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It is literally free and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you're going to be doing yourself a solid and you'll be supporting this show. Get Honey for free and join at honey.com slash trivia. That's Honey. 
com slash trivia. Get it today. What an extension. What an extension. All right. Thank you. Go watch the match. Oh, I do the rules this year? Okay. The rules of round number one are as follows. It is a Star Wars match, meaning you hear 10, yes, 10 questions in round number one. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. You can't see, but I just winked three times. I'll remind each competitor, you have about 15 seconds to get that answer. We're going to ask you to show what you wrote to the camera the same time you verbalize your answer into said microphone. You each have three usages of the JT. We're still calling it the, J the JTE rule. If you need to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, you just want to buy more time to flaunt and make some drama, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three-round match. You may issue the challenge, I guess, especially in Laura's case. We will bring in your manager, regardless if you want them there or not, and then they will confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Christian hadn't done that in a month and a half, and I just, I got to tell you, I feel like I'm born again. So, Mark... I'm ready to go. Laura, are you ready? Let's do it. Molly, are you ready? I'm ready. And let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. In the realm of Revenge of the Sith. In Revenge of the Sith, which character says the line, another happy landing? <laughs> pretty much you and me every time we finish one of these matches wow look at this monster you know what just stuff your face five four four three three two. unbelievable uh, pens down let's see those answers <laughs> just eat your pizza oh, let's sorry. go to law first <laughs> obi-wan kenobi that yes. is correct and molly obi-wan kenobi christian Perfect. you're off this match one to one <laughs> You know, this is what happens. All right. I, have, I have a feeling I'm asking the next question, and here it is. It's in the world of The Force Awakens, Episode 7, and here it is. What is the name of the junk trader on Jakku that Ray frequently does business with? What do you got there? Some pizza? Some lasagna? Pizza. They brought some Good. pizza. Good. That's a very safe-to-eat food on camera. Good yeah. luck. Someone said Vivi Cart, and it is five, four, three, two one pens down please and molly uncar plot yes laura uncar plot here we go so far two two as we get to our next question here it is in the empire strikes back in which year was the empire strikes back originally released very nice of your daughter to uh, swing by with some food. I know she's delivering whiskey to Jim Veveda in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Did you? The best part was she went, hello, Schmodan. And <laughs> five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, Laura Kelly. 1980. Yes, Molly. 1980. Three, three. Next question mark. I feel like this is going to be the... This is going to be this game. Here we go. Uh, 1980, good year. A lot of really sexy babies born that year. The next question is in the world of The Phantom Menace. And it is in The Phantom Menace. What does Anakin say he had a dream that he became that allowed him to free the slaves on Tatooine? It's the first match of the season, and it's already intense. It means you start a to lot. feel that tingle again. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And Molly. Jedi Knight. Yes. And Laura. Jedi. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Uh, and next question Rogue One. Rogue One. Which admiral leads the space assault on Imperial forces during the Battle of Scarif? Hmm. Is that the same admiral who was on Hoth as a senator and then flew to Tatooine with his daughters on vacation? Maybe. Or is that a different? Uh, it's a reminder to the chat not to post any answers. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Laura. Admiral Raddus. Yes, Molly. Nope, I said Goran. <laughs> Goran, wow. So not Rick Raddus, but Raddus <laughs> hits and Laura strikes first blood. All right, next question. 
All right, Christian, we are going to stay in the world of Star Wars, and it's going to be Return of the Jedi, the greatest Star Wars film of all time, bar none. And your question. The Great Pit of Carcoon, which contained a creature known as the Sarwak, is located where on the planet of Tatooine? Get out your, get out your maps. This is a topography question. Yeah, I will tell you that I think Ken Napsok has tears in his eyes that someone missed the, the Radis. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Molly. The Dune Sea? Yes, Laura. It's a desert, but it's a Dune Sea. Unbelievable so far. 6-5, Laura Kelly has not missed thus far. And we get to the seventh question only with a one-point lead, though. Here we go. Next question. The Rise of Skywalker. How often does the Aki Aki Festival of the Ancestors occur? All right. And this is where Christian and I start to tread water furiously. <laughs> no chance. I got no spit. And five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Hands down. Laura, what do you got? Once every 42 years. Unbelievable. Molly? Every 42 years. Yes. Uh, that is something else, Mark. Something else. All right. Next question. Is in Attack of the Clones. And that question from episode two, what is the name of the handmaiden who is also Padme's decoy who is killed in an explosion at the beginning of Attack of the Clones? When they announced that title, that it was going to be called Attack of the Clones, what was your initial reaction, Christian George? I got to be honest with you. I'm just staring at this pizza. Just eat it. I can't do that. Five, four. We all know you're doing three, it. Three, two. I'm staring at it. One. Hands down, please. Molly. Corday. Yes, Laura. Corday. All right, here we go. Two questions left in this round. Laura Kelly has not missed yet. Molly only down by one. And category nine, The Last Jedi. What does Yoda tell Luke is the greatest teacher? Hmm, probably say uh, Mrs. Barrick was my favorite. You think that would be the answer, answer in this? It could be. She, was, yeah, she, she taught me French in high school. Oh, it's fair. Five, four, retain nothing. Three, two, one. Hands down, Laura. Failure. Yes, Molly. Failure. Okay, so Mark, we are at our last question in round number one. Where we stand right now is that Laura so far has a perfect round. Should she hit this one, then she and only she will get a bonus question. Here we go. And that is in the category of, anybody want to guess? Episode four, A New Hope. And it is, Uncle Owen says that Luke better have the units in what area in the farm repaired or there will be hell to pay. It's a tougher question to get through without chuckling than some might expect. It's really tough so far and both competitors showing up. Just shows one little thing, five, four. Repeat. Okay, first one for Molly. All right, and that is in the world of A New Hope, episode four. Uncle Owen says that Luke better have the units in what area in the farm repaired or there will be hell to pay. God sakes, there's mushrooms on this one and pepperoni and everything. Is there hell in Star Wars? Well, I mean, they mention it quite often in a lot Do of- Do they have movies. the Bible out there? Might, they might. Five, space Bible. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Molly. The southern area? That is incorrect. And Laura? The South Ridge. Correct. Laura Kelly with a perfect round. So, Laura, you're going to get a bonus question. You don't have to write it down. You just have to answer it. You get 15 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. What rank does Boss Nass give Jar Jar for bringing the Gungans and the Naboo together in the Phantom Menace? We need the full rank. Bombad General. For one more point, Laura Kelly goes up by three, 11 to eight. What a round for Laura Kelly. Really, really solid. And Molly, eight points, still solid round. As we get to round number two, Mark, what are the rules? The rules are I read this as slow as possible so that Christian can stuff his face. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel because that's the round we're in. It's the wheel of fate, doom, justice. I guess destiny in a galaxy far, far away. Once you settle on a category, you're gonna hear five questions from that world. The questions are to you, 
However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, then you're gonna ask us for multiple choice. The questions are worth two, but if you ask for multiple choice, the value goes down to one. We'll give you four options, one of which is the writers tell us is a correct answer. JT rule still intact, challenges still intact. Christian, I hope I killed enough time. Oh, there it is. Uh, almost. Just, almost. just barely missed it. All right, all right, well, we are now going to give Laura Go Kelly- Don't swallow. The Laura, you can choose whether you want to spin first or defer to your opponent. I shall defer. All right, Kaiser, you get 60 seconds to talk to your competitor starting now. Well, Molly, we all know what you did to Boba Fett in Dex's diner. He tried to start stuff with you. You knocked his teeth into his tuna melt. You don't get down, okay? We played this game enough times in the last couple weeks. You know that. You know what the point values are. This is a race. Mm -hmm. So you take a breath. You got this. Let's knock this wheel round out. Ready. All right. So the wheel is going to go up. There it is. And here's the spin. Do that Return of the Jedi slice. Someone hits that. Revenge of the Sith. All right, 60 yeah. seconds to decide, starting now. Hmm. It's on the, it's on that one list we talked about. It is, yeah. Um, I'm gonna respin. I agree, I agree. All right, here is the spin. Now, whatever Molly gets, that's what she will be answering, Mark. Round and round it goes. We should do like a charity. Like if it hits Return of the Jedi, I donate $20 to Christian's Pizza Fun. Spinner's choice. <laughs> Spinner's choice. All right. So Molly, you got to choose. Uh, what would you like? You got. To, you have uh, some time to talk to Kaiser here. Sixty seconds. Molly, uh, mm. I'm going to leave this in your hands. We know there's a few that you really, really like. I, I think this is played into our. I mean, this is played into our hands brilliantly. I mean, I mean, Laura knows that she. What is she? She can't come back from it. If we clean this up, it's all over with. So, I mean, this is just the best place to be. I'm so excited. I'm, I don't even know what to do here. But <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna leave it on you. Remember, remember the point values. This is nothing. You're only down a couple points. You can come back and, and, and clean this thing up. So, I want to see it. I want to see you pick a winner here. So, why don't you let it rip? Got it. Um, I'm going to go with Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. All right, Molly has chosen like Force Awakens. Are we going to drop out Kaiser? And all right, The Force Awakens. All right, Molly, you're going to get five questions in the realm of The Force Awakens. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. What is the name of the planet the Resistance Base was located? Dakar. Two points. All right. What is Poe's call sign during the Battle of Starkiller Base? Black Leader. Two more points. All right. Han Solo and Chewbacca were hauling what creature on their freighter when they came across Rey and Finn in the Millennium Falcon? Wrath Tars. Two more points for Molly. And here is the fourth question. What is the name of Han Solo and Chewbacca's scavenging ship that Ray, Finn, and BB-8 are tractor beamed onto? The Aravana. Two more points for Molly Damon, doing really well in this category. And here is the final question. Kylo Ren's First Order Star Destroyer goes by which name? The Finalizer. Two more points. Molly Damon really doing well there as we see ourselves now in an 18-11 game as Molly picks up a big point, seven point lead over Laura. All right, so we're going to drop Molly out and we're going to bring back Winston. All right, Winston, you get 60 seconds to talk to Laura starting now. Hey, look, let me just tell you something right now. I know you hate me. You don't want to be on swag, but can I tell you something? I really feel like this is like a Revan, like HK-47 situation. I feel like you're, you're K2SO in this mug. Like, do what you gotta do. If you wanna toss me aside like a meatbag, I don't care. But understand this, I'ma sit here and let you assassinate whoever you want, girl. So go out there and win this thing because you already rolling perfect, baby. So let's spin the wheel and just see what happens. Are you done? <laughs> yes, right, I am. Here's... I am, right. please spin. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, here, the, wheel, the wheel is up. The wheel is up and here it is. Here's the first spin by Laura Kelly. 
Christian couldn't help but notice uh, Shannon Barney in the comment section. Um, not not the kindest of words for Winston. Sorry, no. Winston, I like you if it means anything. That is on Attack of the... No, is that on Attack, That's of, the Attack of the Clones? Attack of the Clones. Okay. Attack of the Clones. I'll keep so, Attack of the Clones. And we're going to get to Attack of the Clones here. Attack of the Clones, Mark. That's right. That is episode two. If you're keeping score at home. And Attack of the Clones it is. Remember, two points per question, unless you need multiple choice. And your first question is... Laura, who ruffles Anakin's feathers by saying, oh, Anakin's not a Jedi yet? Padme Amidala. That is her name, and that is correct for two points. And we move yeah. on. Yep. Sticking with Attack of the Clones, your next question in the film, Attack of the Clones, what title does the leader of Kamino have? Prime Minister. Yes, he does. We move on. Question three. In Attack of the Clones, who absorbs Count Dooku's force lightning with his lightsaber? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thankless task there, but it is worth two more points, and she's creeping closer and closer to Damon's lead as we move to your penultimate question. In round number two, Anakin tells Padme that Obi-Wan believes that he is not ready for the Jedi trials because he is too what? Unpredictable. Damn right he is, and <laughs> boy, some foresight there. Okay, Christian, for a perfect round. Five numbered question for two points. While at the lake country on Naboo, Padme recounts a story of a friend from her youth by the name of Paolo. Padme went on to become a politician while Paolo went on to become a what? An artist. They have those there. Yeah, it's right for two points. That is impressive from both competitors. Uh, 21 18, Laura Kelly with a perfect game thus far. Molly Damon having a great second round. Still down by three as we get into the third and final round. Mark, how does it go? Round number three works like this. Christian tells us what's on top of that pizza, and the competitors also have some work to do. They just need to give us three numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Yes, we have 20 Star Wars categories in round three. Your numbers may not be the same as your opponents because those numbers correspond to a category we're gonna be asking you questions from. Your first question's worth two points. Next one's worth three points. Your final question, should we make it that far? And uh, history indicates we will, is worth five of the biggest points of this young season. So what we need now are those numbers from one to 20. Laura, you do enjoy the lead. So you're gonna give us your three numbers first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? I do enjoy this lead. I am enjoying it. I'm gonna do three, five, and 18. Three, Roger five, that. and 18 for Laura Kelly and for Molly. I'll do seven, one, and eight. Seven, one, and eight. And I do have to quote our graphic designer, the great Brian Ward, who says, an artist, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay, so we have our numbers here. And because uh, Laura Kelly is in the lead, we're going to drop Molly out for a moment. And we're going to bring back Winston. All right, Winston, you got 60 seconds to talk to Laura starting now. I'm just gonna tell a quick story because you really don't want to hear from me. This is, reminds me a lot of what my whole life was in middle school and high school and college and up to about three years ago, where every time I tried to talk to a girl, she'd be like, why are you talking to me? So I understand this. You really don't want anything to do with me and I get that. But you know what eventually happened? I found Kristen and I love her and she loves me. So I don't know if it's gonna happen by the end of the season, but I have a feeling we are gonna be really good friends. So I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna quietly be like, go girl, go. Now you have three JTEs, we have a challenge, do your thing. Don't rest on your laurels because Molly deserves to be here for a reason, but I'm gonna stay out your way. Do you, boo boo. All do right, you. thank you to Winston. Gonna drop Winston out and Kaiser. This, this, match, this match is not about whatever weird thing is going that is the most mismanaged organization i've ever seen in my life over there i don't even know how this guy's allowed to manage molly take a deep breath i want you just to knock this out i want you to just zero in on every question right it's you versus the questions you wipe the slate clean and you start on with the next one this is where you catch this girl she can bleed she hasn't missed yet but she's about to this is your round this is your game sister this is what we train for all these weeks i believe in you make us proud all right, thank you to Kaiser. We're going to drop Kaiser out and bring Laura back. Okay, so 
we now start with Molly Damon. Molly, you chose category number seven. Category number seven. All right. So, Mark, category number seven, that would be in the category of The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens. Okay. Good movie. All right. What rank does Leia hold with the Resistance as we learn from the film's opening crawl? General. Correct for two points. Molly now sees herself. 2120 has to hit this three in order to bounce it to Laura. All right, Molly, you chose category one. Category one. That would be in the realm of the Jedi Order. The Jedi Order. All right. How many students did Luke Skywalker claim to have with him at the Jedi Temple, not including Ben, that was eventually destroyed by Kylo Ren? Twelve. Correct. For three points. All right. So now Molly takes the lead once again. It is now 23-21, Mark, as now Laura Kelly will go here with category number three. That's right. Laura Kelly... Three years before all those sexy babies in 1980, there was a movie in 1977 called Star Wars, Change to Star Wars A New Hope. That is what your two point category is in. And to tie the match, your question is, why didn't the Empire fire on the escape pod housing C-3PO and R2-D2 at the beginning of A New Hope? It detected no life forms. A bad error in judgment for them, but two points for Laura, and we are tied at the top, Christian. We are tied, and we are going to stay with Laura Kelly uh, with Category 5, Mark, who, we, if she hits this, it bounces back to Molly. That's right. Category number 5, shockingly, is not a Star Wars movie. It's who said it, so it's Star Wars quotes. And your three-point question for a three-point lead. Laura, in what Star Wars film will you hear the line, do you have any idea what it's like to live with a price on your head? Solo, a Star Wars story. It's a good Star Wars story too. Yeah, that is correct for three points. And Christian, Laura Kelly back on top again by three. Laura Kelly takes the lead and now sees herself with a 26-23 lead as Molly, you have to hit your five pointer here in order to bounce it back to Laura. If you hit it, that's what happens if you miss it. Laura Kelly will take the victory and the four points for swag. Are you ready? Give it to me. All right, here we go. So, category eight, heroes, heroes. In The Rise of Skywalker, Kanan says two things to Rey through the Force. Her name and what other line? Five, four, Repeat. three. Second one. In the Rise of Skywalker, Kanan says two things to Rey through the Force: her name and what other line. Five, four. Let it lift three. you up. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Laura Lights Out Kelly. Laura Lights Out Kelly wins, and the answer was in the heart of a Jedi lies their strength. Laura Kelly seemed to know that one as well. Laura Kelly does it, and. The first victory goes to Swag. I got four back. points. Two. Let's go. Four Drink. points. Welcome, girl. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go buy some blue milk. I'm going to go buy some blue milk. Yeah. Well, look, look, we're going to bring you guys back in a little bit because Jen Sturger is going to be talking to both of you. But congratulations. Going to move Laura and, and Winston out. Mark, that was, wow. uh, that was an impressive display by Laura Kelly because Molly Damon played great. Molly Damon played great. She just missed one or two. I mean, that that wins you, the way that she played, that wins you a match, mostly. Laura Kelly 
didn't sweat. Laura Kelly looked, I'm telling you, that anger, oof, that was, I mean, that was, that was a performance. That was it's a, a quote in Oscar winning film, Cool as Ice, Laura Kelly, because you are right. Molly Damon, to call what she just did great, is an understatement. Molly Damon was so impressive in this match. I think that the guy in the next office is shaking in his boots. Even though he's got the belt, Laura looks like she's coming right for that belt and making a beeline to do so because that was, I mean, there, there's a reason why people have nicknames. I enjoy carrots. She is lights out. Well, she's got herself a title shot now. She had a title shot when it came to, she fought uh, against Alex Damon at Spectacular 5 and excuse me spectacular four and now she has another opportunity will she be facing damon will she be facing Demolanta? will she be facing both of them only time will tell but what a performance it is and jen sturger is with both laura kelly and her manager winston marshall and i'm sure she's got a lot to ask First of all, I have to say congratulations, Laura Kelly, on an amazing performance today. Winston, you've got to be so proud over there, even though I will say you're kind of giving me that like cool guy that just started dating her mom vibes and like Laura's like the angsty teen that's like, you're not my real dad. That's definitely the energy we got going on right now. I, I would say it's it's one of those situations where like the, you know, the super nerdy kid keeps trying to like ask, like the, the Urkel keeps trying to ask out uh, you know, and be like, will you please just like go on like one day with Laura, me? Laura, could... Laura. It is actually happens to be Laura. See, I wanted to see if you knew that. Way to go, Jen. Don't I, test look, my knowledge. <laughs> all, all I have to say is this, is that Laura Kelly is an absolute beast, period. That, that it is what it is. Um, I get it. She doesn't like me. She doesn't like this faction. She wants to go back to corruption. I, I totally, totally understand that. But there's a reason I drafted her. I believe in her. I do. I really, really do. And what's, you know what's even more terrifying than Laura Kelly going on a tear? Laura Kelly and Ace going on a tear. This entire Star Wars division is about to be ours. And this is how we show this. Laura, you did this. And I'm very insanely proud of you, whether you like it or not. I am so, so proud of you. And Black looks good on you. So if you want to be a Sith Lord the whole time, I'm okay with it, man. Laura, does this victory give you any confidence with your position in swag going forward? I mean, I don't know, not really. Like we, like the people who helped me prepare for this match were listeners of my show and Corruption. There really wasn't like a ton that we were doing with swag. Uh, even like before the draft, even when they knew I wasn't gonna be back on their team, Corruption was still working with me. So I owe a lot of this to them. I owe a lot of this to my listeners. Not sure about swag yet. We'll see. Winston, there's been a lot of rumblings right now about dissatisfaction, not just among, you know, with you and Laura, but also other members of swag. Like, where is all this coming from? I mean, I think part of it comes from the fact that, like, you know, truthfully, we didn't we didn't go the distance last year. We were close and we, we weren't quite there. I understand why Laura doesn't want to be here. She was on the team that put us down. So it is what it is. I get that. But the thing is, is that we have something super special here. We have uh, an energy that's palpable. Uh, we have a crew of people that loves hanging with each other and lifts each other up. And again, whether or not Laura wants the support, we will always be there to support her. So if she does, like, I guess, like the stepdad analogy you gave, if at some point she wants to at least, you know, go get an ice cream with me, I'd be more than happy to buy her an ice cream. If she doesn't, you know what? That's fine. I'm, I'm married to your mom now, so you got to deal with it. Oh my God. <laughs> Jen, uh, Laura, I have to ask. So what does this mean? Do you want Alex? Do you want Andrew? I feel like Alex is just kind of sitting up there on this pinnacle right now and no one's quite figured out how to take him down. Do you think you could possibly be the woman to do that? I do, Jen. And I, the thing is about Spectacular 4, when I had to play against Alex, I was not even remotely ready. I don't know what I was thinking getting up there, thinking that I was even a little bit, I wasn't even close. I'm a totally different player now. I'm so much more prepared for something like this. If Demolant is there too, great. If not, it's whatever. I, but either way, I'm really excited another to have another shot at Damon because I just, I, I think that I can do it. I really do think that I can do it, especially where I am now as a player. I think it's, I think I've got a really good chance. So to be clear though, do you have a preference? Oh. You know, I kind of, 
like really like watching Demolanta suffer. So like doing a triple threat match and taking him out of it would be that would be really satisfying. Hmm. Yeah, keep working on that whole uh, you know, making her nice, uh, Winston, because <laughs> you got some work work cut out for you, all right? I'm- but see, I needed a challenge, you know? That, that, that's okay, because like, if everybody just liked me out the gate, what am I gonna do? Be like, okay, hi everybody, we're friends now. Like, nah, I got something to do, this is amazing. And so, either way, I, I'll say this, you know what, you, you clearly did well on your own, you clearly already have a support system to train, but we have some pretty cool stuff over here, so if you want, I got some quizzes in the back, some speed rounds, we, we can totally pull the speed rounds, and I got binders. Like, what they had a dossier, I got binders. Like, I got an X-Men binder, I got a, 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 what, a Batman binder, and most importantly, I have a Yoda binder. Teach you, I will. Back to the desk. Christian, it, it, it looked like they got thrown into a photo booth together at the Christmas party, and neither one of them really talked ever, but ever. Winston is doing his best to break the ice. The I, ice I, is pretty thick with Lights Out Laura Kelly. She seems pretty intent on somehow Deshaun watching her way back to corruption. Having said that, Jen did a fantastic job wrangling them, but, I mean, we talk about praise and heaping it upon a worthy competitor. That's Laura Kelly. Absolutely it was. But, you know, you mentioned that it was the only time I've seen so far. She said it was almost like she gave swag. She's like, I, I, I haven't worn, really warmed to them yet. It was a yet. It you heard the yet. yet. Okay. I heard a yet. And it was, wait a minute. So maybe she, maybe she's willing. I don't know. But either way, whatever it might, whatever she's doing, she's maybe doesn't want to change it because <laughs> that was a performance and a half. And what it also means is that swag strikes first blood. They are up four points with that win. Four points. It's a number one contender match. So it's worth four points. And that is crazy right now because swag is jumping right into it because they have an opportunity now to go up a potential they can go up eight more points because if chandra defends the championship that is seven points plus a point for another defense so this is a massive massive night for swag and kaiser really needs something big here because if the dungeon starts out Owen, too, he's going to be in a spot. And I'm sure Jen's going to talk to him about that. She's got Molly Damon standing by. So let's go back to Jen, who's with Molly Damon and Kaiser. Kaiser, tough loss out there. I'm sure that's not how you wanted to start your season. How are you guys feeling after that match? You know, uh, Laura is a great player. She's got about as much charm as that lizard bounty hunter thing in, in Empire Strikes Back. But but she's a, she's a darn good player. Um, Winston or Uhura Marshall, whatever he goes by on social media. I, he, I, listening to his voice is like listening to a lightsaber on a chalkboard. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I gotta, I gotta listen to him and look at him for another match. But let me tell you something. Molly Damon trained like a champion and she played like a champion. And this team couldn't be more excited to get her ready for these tournaments that are coming up. She's a big time player. She got all her misses out of the way today. And let me tell you something. I couldn't be more excited to have her on, on the team because she's a winner. And I'm yeah, telling you. Say, you say all of her misses like there were a lot. You know, in any other match, okay, I didn't, that wins I, you the match. You know, I'm saying, her performance you, wins you that match. You want, me to, you want me to spell it out, Jen? The two misses she got, she got out of the way for the season. You know what I meant. You went to college. so <laughs> At Florida State, so. <laughs> mm, that's like Bryant and Stratton where I come from. All right. All all joking aside, did you, what did you guys learn from this match, Molly? I, obviously, you've got to be very disappointed in the fact that you're not going to be able to face Alex, because let's face it, that's kind of one of those matches we all want to see. But what did you learn and what did you take away from this match? Um, uh, well, first of all, it's only a matter of time before I face Alex or whoever will have the belt uh, again, because I'm I'm excited to just smash my way through whatever Star Wars tournaments are going to happen this year. Uh, Laura played fantastically. Um, She always has. So no surprises there. Um, Yeah, I I, I think I played great. I feel like I studied I studied so many three and five point questions that like that those easy ones can kind of slip through the cracks. So I'm telling you, Jen, if you could have seen her in a training session, she was crushing everybody. We were putting her up against Witt, Parker, Smets, 
all of them were there to pick her up and and they love having her on the team she is the ultimate teammate she's the ultimate she was the ultimate get for us and that's and that's why we're, we're happy to have her on the team i wouldn't trade it for anything i'm so stoked for this, this these tournaments that are coming up because you will see the revenge of this sith over here obviously with winston getting the win though do you feel any pressure going into this next match we got one more match, big boy. You hear me, Winston? We got one more match, pal. It ain't over yet. You ain't off the hook yet, pal. <laughs> All right. Well, like I said, I, Molly, hats off to you. It was a great match. At any other time, I I would be interviewing you first. Let's be very clear. This is this performance was nothing to hang your hat out. You know, nothing to be upset about. And uh, I'll be seeing you again a lot more this season. She's a oh, champion, yes. Jen. She's a champion. You watch. I hope I gave Christian enough time to eat his pizza back to the desk i finished we eat pizza uh, uh, the, other, the other thing i do want to say is that if you guys yeah. don't know and you haven't been paying attention to it molly's also on a great show um certain point of view that is on and i think they're doing an, an after show here tonight a rundown obviously you're going to go watch rundown first rundown uh is going to be on directly after this with frank janish and brad gilmore so make sure you head on over there just stay actually just stay on, on the youtube channel and head on over and watch that show but um molly is on that show she's on it every week it's every sunday at a certain point of view it's a great after show great fans great breakdown so make sure you support molly over there as we said swag hits it swag hits a big four points their night is not over they have a championship match it is a big one chandrew the chosen don Dapani faces Mara Kanopic, amazing Mara Kanopic returning after a two, over two year absence. Oh, this is gonna be, I'm so excited for this match. I cannot wait to see what happens here. And a reminder to all of you before, once again, remember that the Patreon, we have a bunch of matches coming up uh, in, in March. The first match of the season is going to be Jesse Swift. That's right, the Jackal, Jesse Swift. Two new rookies going up against Amaru Moses from the usual suspects versus the Berkey Mercs. And then the next day, we're going to see marvelous Marie Wilson. She's one of those Dragon Con players. Also from the usual suspects going up against Corruption, against Sean the Saint Sullivan. He used to be part of the den, not anymore. And then the day after that, Man, look at that matchup. You have Corruption once again, Lady Justice, Marisol McKee, and Swag is going to be at it again with Vinny the Ice Pick Man Q. So that is happening the, the, just in just a week, just about a week away. So make sure you head on over if you already aren't subscribed to the channel. And what we are going to do right now, we're going to take a little break. And when we get back... The movie trivia showdown inner geekdom championship of the world is on the line. Mark, see you in a few.